Hey guys, Brett from Apex Custom Rifles. Today I got a little show and tell. This is the setup for kind of an oddball barrel. So what I have here, and let me explain what I'm doing here. So this is a CVA Scout that's getting converted into a smokeless muzzleloader. This is a, originally a 4570, chambered for a 4570. And what we want to do is take a, I'm going to use a Hankins, uh smokeless plug here that we're going to convert this and this he designed this plug specifically for these cvas because they've got uh, scope mounting holes there in the top so i believe this is 9 16 24 and what we need to do is we need to go in there and bore that to our depth to our minor diameter of our threads and uh, just install that plug not a super difficult operation that I'm going to be doing here but the problem we run into is and this is a 13 by 40 inch lathe this is a Harrison this is a UK built it's a nice lathe that's been rebuilt um, but I cannot fit and there's a block back here that uh, clamps a forearm on I cannot fit this guy in my lathe close to my headstock so this is kind of an old school way of, of doing this what I did here and I'll take a closer look this is an aluminum bushing that I milled, and this barrel is exactly one inch out on the breech end here. So this aluminum bushing I milled, it's about a half inch thick, and it's a split bushing. And if you can see, you probably can't see, but there's two screws holding this thing together. And when I split this thing, I remachined the center of it, and there's only about six thousandths gap in between these. So it's basically just enough to crush down on here, and then when it spins, there's no jump on any of the rollers and, and the, the seam there is gonna hit on one roller at a time. It's never gonna hit two rollers at the same time because we're working on three rollers. But what I'm able to do with this is support this breech end to be able to work on the inside of that thing. I originally had this set up with like a Viper uh, action fixture that you put like in a four jaw and I just didn't feel, I had that thing sticking out about a foot from my spindle, and I just didn't feel like that was strong enough. So we got this guy now, and I had three thousandths run out in that Viper fixture because this thing was, it's about six, seven inches out from where the fixture would have been. So it's really hard to get, it's hard, harder to center this up in that fixture when it's that far out because you move one and it moves both of them. Whereas you put a barrel in there, you can clamp here and clamp here and you move one and it moves this and you move this one and it moves this. So it's a little tougher to do. So I zeroed that thing out best as I could and I had it within about two thousandths and I spent so much time on it, I gave up. And after I did this, so this is kind of an old school way of chambering barrels in general. This is down to less than one thousandths run out in the front and the back. The back's actually a little better and the front is uh, not quite a thousandths, but it's eight tenths. Uh, this is a couple tenths less. But for this project, with these breech plugs, within a thousandths of an inch in the back end here, that's gonna be good enough. This is not chambering dimensions. We're not trying to get absolute accuracy with this uh, breech plug being in there. I mean, we want it to be as accurate as we can, if we're a thousandths or under with this breech plug, that's going to be plenty accurate enough because that's going to basically put our flash hole in the very center there, and that's what we want. Uh, the only other critical measurement here is the headspace, which is pretty easy to set on these. But um, within a thousandths, this thing's going to be just as accurate if it was less than a thousandths. So this is just under a thousandths, and that's going to be good enough for this project. It's not going to shoot any. I bet you if it was five or ten thousands, it probably wouldn't shoot any different. But we want the back end of that plug to be parallel too with the back of this, because then our our little uh, module there will sit flush and flat on our action. And then on the muzzle end, uh, this is a Buck True Adjust Chuck, so it is axially adjustable. And I got it hold in a copper wa copper uh, wire there, but this will be more than enough to hold that in place. And if I need 
if, if I needed to move it at all, I could adjust this and move that, but we're close enough here to where I didn't need to move that at all. Well, I suppose I better get uh, turning on this thing. So I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm gonna do here and I'm not gonna show it on this video, but I'm gonna go through in there with a chucking reamer. It's gonna get reamed out to my depth and then I'm gonna go in there with a boring bar and bore it out to my final minor diameter of my tap. And then my tap I have is one of these nice expensive little, I don't know, this one's relatively cheap actually. This one was only a 50 bucks, I think. Uh, my other one was 80, I think, for the other size plugs, but um, they don't make as many in this 916 24 tap as they do. I think the 5 Ace, 5 Ace 18 is the other for like a bolt action rifle. This guy was, I think, 80 bucks for that guy. That's always fun. I want to snap those. But I was looking for a, a spiral flute tap, and they didn't make one, or I couldn't find one for less than 200 bucks. So um, do minor diameter to depth. You drill, or you tap it with a tap, and then you go in here and you cut your shoulder, and that sets your depth. It's pretty simple relatively simple <laughs> simple for me when i think about it but pretty simple procedure to put these plugs in you just want to make sure that your threads are the correct size you don't overbore your hole and your headspace is correct so i just wanted to show that to you guys and i'm going to get rolling on this project here in a minute but um just kind of a a simple way to set something like this up in your lathe and uh, with you know these breech blocked uh, actions, encores, stuff like that, these CVAs. Um, you know, and quite honestly, if you needed to chamber this thing, if you had a good floating reamer holder, like a JGS, um, you could, in a piloted um, reamer, you could probably turn this thing to damn near zero just in a steady rest like this. So that's, many, many bench rest guns have been built that way, so... Um, this should turn out a very accurate little smokeless muzzleloader here. So, all right. If you guys found that interesting, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you'd do different. Or if you disagree with my whole setup here, let me know. <laughs> Till next time. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.